What is up, Fabrication Nation? So I've been sitting on some footage and it doesn't necessarily all gel together so I'm gonna sit down and kinda of try to lay this out for you so I can use this footage. So as I mentioned on my Friday video, I've been working on the goose, I've been working on some things around the house. I haven't really sat down and filmed an entire episode though, which is very time consuming. But I have captured a lot of footage of what I've been doing and basically I'm just gonna kinda walk you through these things you can kinda see where I'm at and then I'm gonna try to get back on a regular schedule of bringing you good stuff. So to start basically I put the lock wire on the front brakes on the bolts for the front brakes. I actually featured the tool that I did it with in a Friday video I think two Fridays ago and showed you a little bit of that footage but I basically got that finished. I also had to pull the elbow off the top of the intake. So the elbow on the top of the intake, when the car was running, it sounded like it had a vacuum leak. And maybe it did, but it was weird because you could put your hand on the front of that thing, and it was like the aluminum on the front of the elbow was acting like a speaker, like it was vibrating, that was what was creating the noise. You put your finger on it, the noise would instantly go away. So I took it off. I actually needed a port there for the boost reference on the fuel pressure regulator. So I took the elbow off, welded me a plate on there, tapped it, fitting, ran the lines. While I had the elbow off, I put some uh, Eastwood Diamond Clear on that thing. The gloss, man, it looks amazing. It looks like it's wet all the time. I'm probably gonna do the valve covers and the radiator core support to match. I also got the drive shaft from Carolina Driveline. They custom made me a drive shaft specific for this, specifically for this car, motor transmission and motor spacing and all that stuff. Basically, I just measured out the distance that I needed it. They created a drive shaft for this car and the power level. I actually had to change 
the yoke on the rear end. I didn't realize this, but the 8.8s, like the round flange on the rear end, that flange I think is strong enough, but the one that matches it on the drive shafts that you'd normally use is not strong enough for the 1,000 horsepower mark. You'll end up breaking them. So I replaced the yoke on the 8.8 rear end to more of a U-bolt style yoke, and that way I can use the good stuff or you don't even have one, I guess, in that case, on the drive shaft itself. You just have the universal joint itself. So anyway, got that, got it put in the car. Um, they matched it, painted it gray for the goose. If you're anywhere near the Spartanburg area of the upstate of South Carolina and need a drive shaft, go check out uh, Carolina Driveline. Maybe I'll, I'll try to put some, uh, some of their information in the description and uh, tell them I sent you. They didn't really, they didn't like give me a deal or I don't even know if they knew that I basically had a YouTube channel, but had good service, good quality parts. So go check them out, tell them I sent you and maybe through you, they'll discover me. I don't know. Look at that baby. It's like a piece of artwork right there. Now we just gotta cross our fingers and hope it holds the power. I mean it's not it's not gonna make really really crazy power, but drive shafts kinda always freaked me out, you know? And things come out and it's like swinging a big baseball bat, a big steel baseball bat around under your car taking out everything in its way. So, I spent the money, got the good stuff. Hopefully I won't have to uh, deal with any drive shaft issues. All right, now I just gotta cross your fingers that it fits. Hope my measurements were correct. While I was under the car doing the drive shaft, I went in and hooked up the trans brake cable. And so now we got an op optional, operational. We got an operational trans brake on the goose. That's always a good thing. I also had a bunch of mail piling up, so I got all that stuff opened up.
thank you to everybody that sent me mail. As always, I enjoy the stickers. I got them up on the equipment. And uh, as I always say, I like to support those who support me. It's pretty plain and simple, nice and easy. I will drop some links to Sean's YouTube channel and Rockwood LED in the description, as well as the feller who, feller? The fella who made the shop towel holder. He's actually sent me another tool that I think I'm gonna feature on a Friday video. So stay tuned for that, but I'll put some links to those guys in the description. As always, thank you for everything you guys sent me. All right guys, I think that's it for this video. As always, thank you for joining me. I think I'll leave you with a little inspiration as I do sometimes. In a video a long time ago, I talked about there's two kinds of people in this world. There are the kinds of people who are gonna do big things in life and those who won't. There's two kinds of people. And uh, since I kinda said that, I've kinda changed how I feel about that just a little bit. I was listening to somebody the other day and he said, um, there are three kinds of people. There are those who wonder what happened. So basically they have no clue on how somebody did something or how it works or how you get to that point. There are those who watch what happens. So basically they watch somebody be successful. They know how it's done, but instead of doing it themselves, they just watch somebody else do it. And the third one is those who make things happen. So those, and obviously that one's self-explanatory, those, that kind of, that kind of aligns more with how I believe now versus just the black or white. There's those who are gonna do big things and there's those who won't, which I guess is still kind of true, but I like the fact that it's kind of broke up in three areas now. Those that don't even have an idea or a clue because they don't, they choose not to. Those who have a clue but are basically not self-motivated enough to go do it. And then there's those who do it. You know which one you should be. My goal is to maybe inspire you guys, one of you, if it's just one of you guys enough to get out there and do something, then I've done my job. I'm getting ready to add a new shirt to the Kill Fab clothing company line. And I haven't really figured out the design yet, but basically it's just gonna say, deserve what you want. It's pretty self-explanatory. You're not gonna get it. You gotta deserve what it is that you want. You can't just want it and hope to get it. If you want a big business, go do the work to build a big business. If you want a big YouTube channel, do the work it takes to build a big YouTube channel. You want a fast car, do the work that it takes to have a fast car. Deserve what you want. All right, guys, as always, thank you for joining me. I'm sure I'll have some more videos up this week. Go do work, son.